So hi everyone, I'm Arlene O'Neill and my talk is entitled Building Our Future One Nano Layer at a Time. So let's get straight into it. So I'm a nano material scientist, but before I can go in to tell you specifically what it is I do, I must introduce you to this very important person, Professor Richard Feynman, whose motto was, we need to think small for big things to happen. And it was a talk that he gave in 1959 that really inspired a lot of people to go down to the atoms. Why can't we build machines out of atoms and devices out of atoms? And at this very tiny, tiny scale, strange things start to happen. But at the nanoscale, which is one billionth of the size of a meter stick, we need a lot of technologies to be advanced to work down here. To get a real appreciation for this size, Richard Feynman has allowed us to pluck a strand of hair from his eyebrow and look at it in the electron microscope. And what we see is that one single strand of hair is 100,000 nanometers. I need to get down to one nanometer. So I work with materials 100,000 times smaller than a single strand of hair on a daily basis. And what I first do is I take a layered structure. So take, for example, this book, which has sheets stacked one on top of the other, and I add it to a specific liquid. Next, I add some energy. And we'll see here this sonic tip. And it causes the sheets within the book to separate and fly around and float around in the liquid. So what I'm, hope I left, what, I'm hope, what I'm hoping I'm left with is single sheets floating around. So I've removed that height element. I've removed all the sheets above and below. So I've taken something that was once three-dimensional and brought it down to just a two-dimensional object. If we look at this in terms of atoms and materials, we have the exact same thing. We take a material which has sheets of atoms, sonicate, and we're left with just these two-dimensional nanosheets. And when we get down here, the properties are incredible. So there's a whole range of elements from the periodic table that build materials that are layered. And once they're layered, I can do this to them, and each new element or new material has a new property, a very unique property. So in terms of how can we use these materials, there are a wealth of applications because each of them has its own unique property. So for example, in energy storage and en energy harvesting, a um, very viable route, these nanomaterials, also in our aircrafts and our space rockets, where they're now made of materials so much lighter, yet really, really strong. Of course, nanomedicine, very hot, controversial area, where we, they can be used for drug delivery, but also in the sensors to determine if there's a foreign species, an atom of a foreign species in the body. They're also in very high-end consumer products, so all our top athletes would have these nanomaterials somewhere embedded in them. But what I find most, I suppose, exciting is the next field of electronics, nanoelectronics, where we're going to mix these nanomaterials with plastics and current products so that we can roll up our laptop, put it in our pocket, take it back out later, and it's working perfectly. So this is the future, and my materials are making the future possible. Thanks very much.